Father God, we come before you this morning and we acknowledge that you are holy and you are worthy, that you're abounding in love, you're rich in mercy. And God, you are overwhelming with generosity. That God, you would see us, you would find us in our plight, in our condition, in our sinfulness. And God, you chose to redeem us by sending the perfect, spotless Lamb of God to be born of a virgin, not to sit on an earthly throne, but to live within us. God, we are so grateful this morning. God, may you remind us today of the significance of Christmas and the reality of your generosity. And we pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You could be seated this morning. Well, I am glad you are here. Uh, if you're using version, the Bible app, today's notes are not there for you. Um, version is available. You can submit prayer requests on, by the way, our kiddos, y'all are free to go with Pastor Charles and Miss Tierra if you'd like. In version, the live component this morning, you can still submit prayer requests. You can do your online giving. You can connect with us on Facebook, on the version app. You can also sign up for our email newsletter each week. And so that's all still there. But last night during our time of worship, um, the Lord just prompted me to just do something completely different. And so this morning, um, the message is different. It's not what's in your notes. In fact, um, beware, I have no notes, okay? And so I'm just going to trust the Lord and you do the same. And we're going to, to come to this place of remembrance. We're going to celebrate the Christ child we're also going to just marvel at the generosity of God. Over the last few weeks, I've taken you on a series of messages called The Generosity of God. We said that there are several benefits to our generosity. Um, one of the benefits, um, people, often, people often express gratitude for our generosity. And um, all this week in the 12 days of Christmas, people have expressed their gratitude because of your faithful generosity. When we're generous, it puts on display to the world those things which are most important to us. And so um, being generous says, hey, Jesus means an awful lot in my life. Um, generosity also ultimately pleases God. And so we, we've talked about that. We also talked about the reality that in Exodus chapter 13, um, God said to Moses, Moses, I want you to sacrifice the firstborn, the firstborn of all your, your livestock. I want you to sacrifice it. But if it's unclean, if it's unclean, like a donkey, and I don't know about you, but I identified really well with that donkey. Remember what we oftentimes call a donkey? I won't do it this morning, but you, you follow me, right? It doesn't take too long for me to become a donkey uh, in my life. And so it says, take and redeem the donkey with a lamb, with a lamb. And, and I want to remind you, what is it that we call the baby Jesus? He is the lamb of God who came to redeem us. And so we've been talking about generosity. We've been a generous church. We've done the 12 days of Christmas. And today, we have the privilege of partnering with other churches in our city to declare the gospel through Radical Christmas. And so before we, before we wrap up the 12 days of Christmas, before we do Radical Christmas, before you gather around your tree this year and you open presents and, and you get involved in all the... the the um, nuances of Christmas and Christmas lunch and all those things, I, I thought this morning it just might do us well to remember why we're generous. Why will we work and serve a radical Christmas today? And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, 
this morning. Give you just a second to get there. Luke chapter 2, we're going to begin in verse number 1. We're simply going to just cruise through the Christmas story, and then I want to remind you the significance of this reality. Verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each in his own town. Verse number 4. Joseph, he also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came, the time came for her to give birth. In verse 7, she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Beginning in verse 8, we see that the message of the birth of Jesus comes to the shepherds. Check this out in verse 8. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, and they were keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, I love this, every time an angel appears in Scripture, it seems that this is his first words. He says, fear not, um, because I'm certain that if an angel appeared to me, I would probably mess myself. And so the angel says, fear not, and gives some comfort, okay? He says, fear not, for behold, I'm bringing you good news. Say good news. Turn to your neighbor, point your finger, say, we're talking about good news. In fact, we're talking about good, good news. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, in fact, we're talking about good, good news. Now, if you can't say good, good news without getting excited and having a smile on your face, you've got to pay attention, push in real close, because I'll have you shouting and dancing before the day is over, okay? Because this is good news. The angel declares, behold, I bring good news of great joy that will be for all people. Take your finger, point to yourself, and say, that means me. We are all people. There's good news for all people. Verse 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And I still have my baby Jesus from my manger scene. And so... Um, just a point of reference, okay? Um, these aren't just cute little decorations that we buy and display this time of year. This is the reality that took place over 2,000 years ago in a barn, in a stable. A baby was born and laid in a manger, and it goes on in verse 13. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude, so now it's a multitude, a heavenly host, and they were praising God, and here's what they said. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. Verse 15, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds, they said to one another, let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. I love verse 16. Check this out. And they went with haste. They wasted no time. They understood the significance. They understood the magnitude of the good news that was applicable to them. They wasted no time. They immediately went to Bethlehem and to see this thing that the Lord has made known to us. Verse 16. They went with haste. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. 
And all who heard it wondered at what the angels told them. But Mary, she treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds, they returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Verse 21, And at the end of the eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus. 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 There is power in the name of Jesus. If you don't believe me, while you're having Christmas conversation this week, insert the name Jesus in the conversation and see how incredibly uncomfortable people become when you say Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus, power to change and to transform lives, the power to bring hope in absolute, utter desperation. There is power in the name of Jesus. He was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was ever conceived in the womb. That is the Christmas story. But let me just say this this morning. I've encouraged you over the last few weeks, hey, let's become a generous church. Why? John 3, 16, it's familiar for all of us. For God so loved the world, that's you, that's me. That he did what? That he gave. Say gave. For God so loved the world, he gave. What was it that he gave? He gave Jesus. He gave Jesus. Now, this is significant, and I want to unpack this for you. It's not that we need your stuff. It's not that we want your finances. It's not that Jesus needs your stuff. It's the reality that he gave, and we're most like him when we too give. It's not about your stuff. It's not about your money. It's about your heart. It's about your heart. And so I think it would do us well this morning before we endeavor to give away another thing today, before we dare exchange gifts and pleasantries around the tree, that we consider the magnitude of the gospel and the Christmas story. In Romans chapter 3, verse number 23, Romans 3, 23, it says this, For all have sinned. For all have sinned, and I love doing this. Somebody give me the definition of all. Everybody. All, everyone. That includes your mama, your daddy, your great aunt and uncle, your boss, your co-worker, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your children. Everybody. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's all of us. And so here's the thing I love about Christmas. It reminds us all of our starting point. We all, I don't care what your background is, I don't care what your resources you have available to you are, I don't care if you have a small Christmas, a huge Christmas, I don't care if you're a turkey person or a ham person, I don't care where you come in today with perspective at Christmas, we all start out, listen to me, in need. We all start out in need. And Christmas is all about, generosity is all about identifying a need and coming forth to meet it. You see the term sin in Romans 3.23 where it says all have sinned, that's an archery term. It's an archery term, and it simply means this. If I'm, if I'm looking at my target downrange, and I begin to pull back my bow, and all of a sudden I'm distracted, and I let it go, and I realize, oh my goodness, I'm going to miss the mark, I would yell, sin! And if you've ever played golf with me, you know that that term is similar to a golfing term, which we would say, Everybody duck. And if you play golf with me, that, that's necessary. And so sin is an archery term. When you would shoot the arrow, if it was going to miss the target altogether, you would yell sin. Now let me ask you something this morning. We have a standard. We have a mark. We have a target. It's the holiness of God outlined in Scripture. And here's the reality. I don't know about you, but I can say without a doubt... I've missed the mark in my life. 
And, and here's the truth of Scripture. You have to. We have all sinned. We've all missed the mark. How many of you are here this morning and you can declare with honesty and vulnerability that I've missed the mark? All of us. Those of you that are watching at home, all of us. You have missed the mark too. Now, here's the reality, the wages of sin. Now, check this out. We've all sinned and we've all missed the mark. Turn with me a few pages over to Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23. It declares that there's a penalty for our sin. It says the wages of sin is death. Say death. Death. The wages of sin is death. Now, what is a wage? A wage is something you earn, right? A wage is something you earn. Like if you work a job, you earn a paycheck. If you work at McDonald's and you put in an hour's worth of work, there's a minimum wage that you will receive, okay? So a wage is what we deserve. And so, Tucker, buddy, can you come help me a second? Here is the deal. I love this illustration. It, it just helps us understand this. And so, Jennifer, would you go ahead and grab our checkbook? Yes, he's seen this and heard this. But, but for those of you that maybe haven't, you need to check this out. What is it that I need? I need my car to be washed. My car is filthy. We've had the snow and the ice and the, the rain and all the stuff, and it's just filthy. And so the going rate for a car wash is about 10 bucks. So my question is, will you wash my car for 10 bucks? Okay. Jennifer has a check made out to Tucker Cheney. And in the memo line, it says car wash. Okay. So if you wash my car, you will earn this 10 bucks. I'm going to go ahead and sign the check. Okay, so Tucker, let's make this real clear. In order to receive this 10 bucks, what must you do? Wash my car. Now, you're going to make a promise to me today that you will wash my car, and I'll give you 10 bucks. Deal? Okay, so now he has agreed to wash my car. He will wash my car. He will earn a wage. Everybody tracking with me? Got that? Pretty simple. That's what Romans 6.23 says. It says, the wages of sin is death. So how many of you, just a few moments ago, you can't remit now, but how many of you a few moments ago, you acknowledged that you had missed the mark and had sin in your life? Congratulations, you've earned death. Congratulations, you've earned death. You will spend eternity separated from God. You will spend eternity in a place called hell with Satan and the angels of darkness. Congratulations. You've earned it. It's not very good news, is it? But that's truth. Just as Tucker will wash my car and earn 10 bucks, you have sinned and you have earned for yourself death. Now, I love scripture. I, as an adult, I've begun to understand and actually enjoy um, punctuation. If you look at verse 23 in chapter 6, it says, it says the wages of sin is death, comma, but those three letters change everything. They change everything. That means, that means he's not done. The, the comma is just an abbreviate, it's just a small pause, and, and it goes on to say, but the gift, say gift, but the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life. Remember, we serve a God who is rich in mercy, overwhelming with generosity. He is giving an abundance of grace and love and mercy. He says he has a gift. The gift of God is eternal life. Now, those of you that are parents and you've been Christmas shopping, You've got your gifts all prepared to be wrapped, or they are wrapped under the tree. What is the condition in which your children must do to receive gifts on Christmas? If it's anything like my house, nothing. They are gifts. Okay? So what is it you have to do to make a gift yours? 
You simply receive it. Say receive it. Now check this out, Tucker. Here on the memo line it says car wash, right? So as it stands, you have to earn this by doing what? Washing my car. But see, check this out. God is generous. And again, you've got to get this. Because some of you, you have this mentality. Listen to me. I've got to get up and go to church. I've got to give an offering. I've got to be generous at Christmas. I've got to go to Radical Christmas. I've got to participate. And some of you, you have that I've got to attitude. Well, check this out. When you understand the significance of the gospel and the overwhelming generosity of God himself through the birth of his son Jesus, you will develop a we get to do this heart and attitude. Now, check this out, Tucker. I'm going to do something. I'm going to take my pen and I'm marking through car wash and I'm just going to write four little letters on this memo line. What are the four letters, what word did I write on the memo line? Gift. Now we're talking because now this is no longer a wage that you have to earn. In fact, all you have to do because it's a gift, Tucker, all you have to do is what? You see, all you've got to do all you've got to do, Tucker, in your life is you've got to take it and you've got to receive it because I'm telling you, it's life-changing. You see, I love this. The generosity of God, it is unconditional. It's unconditional for you. It's unconditional for you. And for you, it's unconditional. A gift, you, you do nothing to earn it. It's because of the generosity of God. And so, Tucker, you can receive the gift. It's a gift. You do nothing for it. And here's the reality of the gift of God. He didn't say, wait, wait, wait. Let's just make sure Micah would do a good job. Let's, let's wait and make sure Ben attends Sunday school. Let's wait and see if Justin participates and gives of his first fruits. Let's wait and see. No, in his absolute generosity, in his overwhelming love, his grace and his mercy, he looked upon you and me and he says, I love him unconditionally and in Jesus I offer a gift. Thank you, Tucker. Appreciate that. Check this out. My favorite, my favorite verse in all of Scripture. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse number 5. You see, we celebrate the birth of Jesus because we were in need. We were in over our head in sin, and there had to be a spotless lamb given and sacrificed to redeem us. Now, here is the awesome display of God's generosity. Romans 5.8. Once you got it all figured out, once you memorized John 3.16, no. Check this out. While we were still sinners, while we were still sinners. I love this. Most of us have this heart attitude. We have this misconstrued understanding. I'll come to church. I'll give my life to Jesus when I get it all figured out. I've got some things in my life I've got to get rid of. I've got to shake some things up. I've got to get some things in order. And when I do that, then I will come to Jesus. Listen to me, church, it's not necessary. Scripture says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I hope you never look at a manger scene the same, because here's the truth. This baby, this baby was born to die. This baby was born to die. I've had the extreme privilege to go to hospitals and hold newborn babies, and I've never once, never once began to think or look to that innocent child's death. This week, Jessica Pemberton and Brandon, they gave birth to a son, Mason, 
and I went to see the baby and never once thought, wow, I wonder how he's going to die. He's celebrating his life and his birth. Uh, this morning, uh, Blake and Marty Hickman, who come, they gave birth to a new baby, and when I saw it on Facebook, never once thought, wow, geez, wonder how that baby's going to die. But here's the weight and the magnitude of this baby. Its entire purpose, the purpose of its birth, its sinless life, its enduring shame, and, and, and all the things, the persecution, it was for you and I. Because God was overwhelming with his generosity while we were still sinners. He didn't wait for you to figure it out. Christ died for us. Now, we're being generous, right? We, we no longer have to. It's because we understand the significance and the magnitude that we were once lost in sin, but because of God's generosity, His mercy, and His grace, we've been set free, we've been redeemed, we've been restored. We now get to share in that. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whosoever believe in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Remember, he gave his one and only. He, he gave so that his son Jesus might be multiplied. You and I are the multiplication of his sacrifice. He no longer has one and one only son. He has a multitude of children. He has a host of children. Their names are Connie and Rich and Jennifer and Jody and Brad and Judy. We are the children of God. Now, you got to understand this, church, because sometimes when you receive a gift, I don't know about you, but when I was in school, I would love to go back to school after Christmas break, and I would uh, have my shoulders all kind of puffed up and my chest out and my chin high, and I would boast a little bit about all the things I got for Christmas. I got the bike that no one else in the city got. Yeah, 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 look at me, look at me, look at my gifts, look at what I received. Well, check this out, church. That is our tendency, but you've got to understand something about the gospel. You've got to understand something about sin. We all, we all start at the same place. And we all have the free gift of salvation accessible to us. We love John 3, 16. Sometimes we, we forget about 17. Check this out. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Listen to me. If Jesus did not come to condemn the world... Neither should you or I condemn the world. But rather, we should put on display the generous heart of God that says all are welcome at the table. The birth of Jesus is good news for all people. you got to get it. Otherwise, your generous acts, your generosity, even on your best day, listen to this. Scripture says that even on your best day, your good works are like filthy rags. Translation, dirty tampon. On your best days, you got to get it. You got to give out of a generous heart that absolutely captures the generosity of God. So, 12 days of Christmas have been great. Radical Christmas will be great. But it's out of the generosity in which we've received that we're able to give. And so this week, as you celebrate the birth of Jesus, may you be mindful of the reality that Jesus came in order that he might die to redeem us. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning. God, and I so thank you for the birth of Jesus. God, I thank you that this morning you have brought us to this place of being mindful that, Lord, the good news was delivered 
to shepherds, common, ordinary people just like us. Your generosity was put on display to normal, average, everyday people. God, we too are recipients of your generosity. God, the good news that we, we've come to understand to be the gospel, the story of the birth, the life, the death, the burial, and most awesomely, the, the resurrection of our Jesus. God, thank you that that good news is still good news. It's still changing lives. It's still bringing about hope and restoration. It's still giving second chances. It's still giving and delivering new beginnings and new outlooks. It's still equipping and qualifying believers for everyday acts of generosity and kindness that might lead to the hope of salvation through the gospel story. God, we are absolutely thankful. And so, God, I pray that as we just examine our own hearts, as we begin to ponder that attitude of we have to, God, may it change this morning to the reality that we get to. We get to partner with you. We get to be generous. We get to point men and women to Jesus. We get to serve one another. We get to do the drive-through difference. We get to love on our teachers. We get to participate in Radical Christmas. We get to offer gifts to our family and our children over the next few days. We get to sit with our family and delight in this season. We get to share the hope of Jesus. God, what a joy and a privilege it is to be called children. Children of the Most High. With every head bowed and every eye closed, in just a few moments, I'm going to ask you to stand. But I know that in a group this size, it's quite possible that there's someone here today that you've come to understand your sinful condition and your absolute desperate need for Jesus. And today may be the day that you, you receive Him as your Savior and you start with a new beginning. In a few minutes when we stand, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to invite you to come and to respond. And I know that can be a little intimidating and a little scary, but, but we'll make it very easy and very simple for you. If today you need to receive Jesus, you just simply slip up here to the front, give me a high five, and say, I'm ready. And I'd be glad to show you in Scripture and to pray with you. For others today, the reality is... Maybe we haven't given much thought to the generous heart of God. Maybe for some of us, you, you know it, you understand it, you realize it, but, but you certainly haven't been living in response to it. And, and so the invitation is for you to respond to the generosity of God. What will you do with the birth of Jesus? The altar is open. And church family, I would love nothing more than for us to respond and just come with a heart of gratitude saying, thank you, God, for your generosity in the gift of Jesus. And now may I leave this place living in response to that in my own life. Would you stand to your feet all across the worship center this morning? With heads bowed and eyes closed, will you respond to the birth The birth of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the perfect Lamb of God. Would you respond to Jesus? One, two, three. You respond as we sing. Oh, come let us adore.
manipulator I really am not but sometimes I feel like pastoring you people is like herding cats it's an impossibility I just declared to you the greatest story known to mankind the angels they begin to rejoice with praise and I said if you get it I'll make you want to shout and even dance this morning will you please not for me not to be manipulated but will you respond to the one through the birth of his son Jesus, would you respond to that this morning to his glory? Amen. Let's continue to sing. Oh, come, let us Stand amazed at 
at the work of the cross We are saved We are saved Our sin has been forgiven You have broken every chain We are saved We are saved Yeah, we are saved We are saved You guys like good news? We've been celebrating good news this morning. Hey, Tyler, can you come join me a minute? You see, this is what I love about the Christmas story. And this is what I love about generosity. This is my friend Tyler, and he just came this morning. And you know what? The clarity of the story of Jesus and the gospel was just laid out this morning. And this morning, my friend Tyler prayed to receive Jesus as a Savior, and he received that free gift of salvation. Now, I, I love the Christmas story because it just so clearly communicates even to the heart of a child. But church, can I tell you something else? Uh, and, and I truly believe this. And, and his mother, I think, will be a testimony to it. Tyler is here. And Tyler has understood the gospel even at a young age. It's interesting. I think he kind of had the, the uh, cart before the horse, but, but one morning he left here. He gave me a high five going out the door. And what did you tell me you wanted to be when you grew up? A preacher. And so I knew from that day God has something in store for this young man. And today he understands the significance of the gospel. Um, but, but here's what I think we can say for sure. Tyler's here because of generosity of people of faith. Um, we met his mother through the opportunity for us to give and to be generous. Um, and in fact, he reminds me a whole lot of myself. Uh, just telling you. I mean, he is a schmoozer. I love it. Um, and so he's a product and I could go into detail, but it's not necessary. But just know this, because of your generosity, and sometimes even when you feel like, well, I don't know if my gift is going to make a difference, whatever that gift is. You received a big old honking Superman this week, didn't you? See, that gift made a difference. It did. And so today, uh, we get to celebrate that. And so we're excited. In fact, I just want to just take a minute. I want to pray for Tyler and uh, just his walk. Um, he, he got it maybe a long time before some of us did. And so um, we're just going to pray uh, with him and for him this morning. And then I'll share some other good news in a minute. Father, I come before you and I thank you for my buddy Tyler. God, I thank you for the Christmas story and the generosity that brings about hope for even someone like Tyler. God, who doesn't even know or fully fathom the magnitude, the circumstance, or the consequences of his sin, Lord, here in this life, but God, he knows that he is worthy. He knows that he's redeemable. He knows that the birth child at Christmas was sent for him. And so, God, thank you for that. I pray that we as a church might come alongside and disciple and, Lord, serve along his mom and to to play the role that the body of Christ is called to play. And so, God, today we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We celebrate the new birth of Tyler. And, Lord, we absolutely welcome him into the family of God. And we pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Give God a hand one more time this morning. Thank you, man. You can go have a seat.